pretty tough week, you know, especially on the defensive side. I thought both uh, South Al and Troy played extremely well. They shot the ball well and really didn't have an answer on slowing them down a little bit, even though we did play good at times. Uh, both four first quarters hurt us. You know, they, they took the lead and uh, we tried to fight back, but never really could. In the South Al game, I thought we made a little run the second quarter and then shot clock goes out. Now you got a freshman team or freshman and sophomore trying to play without a shot clock. Wasn't, uh, wasn't too fun. Get back at half, the clock's working, and uh, they never missed a beat. Uh, so it was uh, it was kind of tough, but uh, saw some good things uh, from Ty Doucette in the South Isle game. And then in the Troy game, uh, I thought Brandi Williams played really well. I think she was uh, four for four from the field, five for five from the free throw line, um, had a few rebounds and assists, so she played uh, – what you call the perfect game. We just wish you would have shot the ball a bit more. We made a run the third quarter and cut it to eight, and then uh, South Al just kind of came back. And I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Troy just kind of came back and, and made their run. But they're difficult to play against, well-coached uh, teams, and, uh, you know, just kind of tough. This week will be tough. Uh, UTA, uh, Tuesday night, uh, they, they're playing really well, and they're shooting it really well. Um, then you, then you got uh, we got App State on Thursday, uh, another team that's playing pretty well, and then on Saturday Coastal got their first win on Saturday, uh, and I'm surprised they haven't been doing as well as they have because they got a pretty good team. But uh, any questions? Just from yelling or just uh, just sick? No, I've been fighting the co the change of weather, you know, the cold. The, the whole team kind of kind of fighting through it, and coach staff and all that. So it's kind of. This morning was really rough. Uh, me and Stevie were kind of laughing about it, but that, yeah, it's kind of part of that. What do you have to do against a team that shoots it as well as UTA does? Um, I think, um, man, you got You got to find them early, and I think that's the one of our weaknesses. The defensive transition is how do you transition into finding the shooters and all that? And man, you got to find them early. Uh, First of all, make shots on our side, so they got to take it out and it slows down the transition. But uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, that's a tough one, you know. I think a defensive transition is the one, the one way you can do that. Yeah. How do you guys bounce back from maybe some of those slow quarters you had, like the one you had on third and in the court nine? How do you guys bounce back from slow quarters? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, and that's why we rely on our defense too much. You know, it's, if you're if you're not scoring and they are, man, it's just tough to bounce back. You know, um, I, I don't know. You know, the second quarter, I mean, at, at South Isle was pretty tough because of the no shot clock. But then, you know, at uh, at Troy, you know, just you know, I guess this is the inexperience. You just got to keep. You know, you got to just kind of learn how to keep playing. We we say it a lot in practice and all that. Hey. You got to keep playing. You got to keep going through it, you know, because they're going to make runs and all that. And I thought uh, in the Troy game, we just didn't make those kills, that we didn't make those stops that we needed to make. You know, the first half, they shot it 70% from the field. And in the second half, they just out rebounded. So it's a, it was a difficult uh, situation for those young players. But, you know, just say, hey, keep playing and, and try to get better. And what stands out defensively about UTA? Uh, man, uh, the Johnson kid, Sarah Johnson, is really, really good defensively. Uh, they press a lot. They pressure you. They t and they're creating turnovers, um, and they're scoring from those turnovers. So that, to me, that's what's impressive about them. Not only can they shoot it, but they can defend in the full court. Three games in six days. Does that impact your rotation early on in the week? Do you do some things different on tomorrow? You know that you yeah. Saturday to get to? Yeah, well, I mean, we're only playing eight kids, you know. We, we have only eight kids available right now, so everybody's rotating in. We, tr we tried actually going five and four, uh, rotating, keeping somebody in. We tried uh, on this last swing, and it didn't seem to <laughs> affect us that much. Uh, this week, I mean, we got a couple of kids that are kind of banged up that we'll hold out of practice a little bit today, you know, to kind of give them some more rest and um, – it's just a tough situation, you know. We knew we would run into problems with this mirror schedule, you know, and the dome wasn't available on the 21st, so we had to make a move. Um, and this was the only move that we could come up with. Uh, we tried to play in Blackham, and I think the cost was too high, and on and on. So, it, I mean, not a perfect situation for us, especially right now, the way we banged up. But, uh, you know, if I had to look back on it now, I don't know what we would try to do something else. But, uh, you know, we'll just have to try to fight through it. 
three games are going to be tough on a, on a young team like this. Out of a, outside of a tournament, have you ever had a stretch of what, five games in ten days, something of that nature? I don't remember. No, not not that I can remember that we've had it. You know, I mean, we may have, but I, I don't really remember. You know, maybe our first year because I mean the way conference was the first year we were here. We started November twenty fourth. I remember my fourth game I ever coached here it was a conference game, so that was kind of t- that was actually probably tougher than what we're getting ready to deal with now. Well, the outcomes of the game haven't necessarily been what obviously you want. Someone like Brandy Williams, such a young girl. How do you feel as a coach having her as a freshman and seeing everything she's continuing to do for this team and knowing you have to Yeah, her? it's exciting, you know, and she's she's been one of the most consistent one players, you know, and that's good for a freshman. But, you know, she's leading all freshmen in scoring in the conference, you know, at right around 14 points a game, which is pretty good. And, you know, hopefully she can continue to be consistent like she's doing. And uh, what, what the thing that we're not noticing, you know, maybe from the outside is she can defend too. So she's got that combination of able to guard and to score. So it's exciting to see that. And, you know, I mean, it's because she works hard every day in practice. You know, she's a very coachable kid. And so hopefully that she'll be one day, she'll be one of our leaders. How do you handle it when there's no shot clock? Is it like verbal from the bench? <laughs> well, you know, it was an education game. Another thing that I made a mistake on, you know, I don't think they should have education games during conference. And I didn't realize it until after. And I mean, I love Coach uh, Fowler, so I didn't. I kind of went along with it, but we played an education game with over 2,000 kids. They're screaming and they were loud. So they came up to us and said, well, they'll announce when there's 10 seconds left. And, I mean, couldn't hear it. And the kids were counting down. The, ref, the referee said, when an announcer told me when I walked back, I look, I'll, I'll announce 10 seconds. I said, yeah, that's going to help. You know, and, the, and the good thing about the kids, they were counting down the wrong thing. You know, when there was 20 seconds left, they were saying 10, 9. And so it was pretty cool in that standpoint, you know. So it got, it got pretty tough, you know. And I think one of the refs told me, well, just glance over at the other clock. And, yeah, I mean, that's a lot easier said than done. So, I mean, I just hope it doesn't happen again or to any other team. That's, that's kind of tough to deal with. So they had one on one end and one on the other. Yeah, the one on the, on the end that they were playing on was working. You're supposed to turn that one off by rule. I call, we called the conference and all that. And... We haven't, uh, yeah, I, I, that's what I would have thought about rule if there's not one on one side. Is, that's what it is? Okay. Well, we need to look up and down. I know we, we, we. Maybe we, you get a replay. Yeah. Worse the maybe you get a replay. Oh, maybe, hey, hey, you never know, man. It's, maybe it was one of those weeks, you know, against Louisiana, but that's all right, you know. Uh, we learn from it. Hopefully, that uh, if that's the case, then we'll know next time. Because I question, I, that was one of my questions at halftime. Uh, but that was tough. Uh, you know, I know we, we dealt with some tough things uh, last week with Coach Glasgow and all that, and I just want to extend our our team's uh, condolences. You know, my girls are, are, are felt by it. I know I could tell at the game at Troy, when, and, uh, and hats off to Troy for uh, giving us a silence uh, for his daughter, and I think that's a big thing, you know. Uh, I've never lost. I lost my wife, and I thought that was one of the toughest things to do, but... I hear it's ten times worse to lose a, a kid, and man, I, you know, one thing he's going to find out from this community, they're going to stick with them and they're going to be behind him. And I know one thing: our women's basketball program and our young kids are behind him. And uh, you know, anything he needs from us, he, we definitely hear. And I appreciate the community for what all they do for our athletics too. And you know, we'll continue to pray for him and his wife and his family.